Maguire, Manchester United fans, the majority of them, whether they loathe him, think he's okay, like him, most believe, to quote, boys to men, it's come to the end of the road. In the summer, a deal could not be done. The media told us that deal fell through because the player did not want to agree to a pay cut. Now, the player has kind of come out publicly during the international break and has somewhat debunked this and said that wasn't the case at all. The deal between Manchester United and West Ham was never done. He stated that playing football is more important to him. With work ahead of the January window starting now, this has led to stories now coming out, as you can see, shared by Transfer News Live, by the source of ESPN, that West Ham are considering a fresh approach for Harry Maguire in January, should his lack of playing time at Manchester United continue. And there's nothing that suggests his lack of playing time will not continue. Yes, right now, there's, there's issues over the long-standing fitness of Rafael Varane. But Luke Shaw is closing in on a return. And the manager has shown in the past that he's more likely to play him at centre-back than Harry Maguire. Come January, you would expect all of our fullbacks to be back with, within reason. The Sandro Martinez to be back and hopefully fully fit. And the club really wants to invest in new centre-backs, Todibo being one of them. And there's a number of other players and centre-backs across Europe right now that Manchester United is scouting that they want to bring in, they believe will improve that defensive line. So even if Maguire is getting more game time, unless he is back to the peak of his powers and looks flawless and brilliant, I still believe the manager is going to want to look past him and say, great but I want something more. I want something better. Personally, I think this is the best for everybody. Hearing him this week talk about the win percentages and how good he is when he plays still tells me there's a lack of accountability when it comes to Harry Maguire. Personally, I don't want that attitude at Manchester United. You can call me foolish. You can call me silly. But I want him to move on for him, for the club. It will probably improve West Ham and it will likely make England better if he's playing regular football as well. Because generally speaking, in the free line shirt, Maguire has rarely put a foot wrong. So if United can get this deal done and then take that money and reinvest it in a good quality centre back that really will improve us as a team, I am all for it. But as ever, people, I want your opinions. Leave your comments below. Let me know what you think. Of course, if you haven't done so yet, Hit the like button, should be the first thing you do when you arrive. If you haven't subscribed, firstly, why not get it done and make sure the bell notifications are turned on as well. Now, moving on to Arsenal, there's been some interesting stories surrounding them of late. We're going to touch on Ivan Tony in this video as well because stories won't stop coming. Arsenal's kind of propaganda merchants, you know, they're ex-pros, they're, they're ex, they're the ex-pros, the ex-Arsenal players in the media are talking about it. We're going to come to Ivan Tony, But there's another name, another player who who is so on point for Arsenal, so on kind of on vogue in terms of what they've been trying to build. It's interesting. There's a young winger at Borussia Dortmund whose name is Jamie Bino Gittins. And I don't know how many of you know much about him or not. 19 years of age and starting now to break through, starting to get regular game time, starting now to really make his mark on, on football, as it were. And I've seen him play a few times, and there's some talent in this kid. He's a right-footed player who this season has predominantly played on the left-hand side, but at, throughout the course of his career, including sort of at the, the reserves and academy level, has been equally comfortable on the left and the right-hand side. So there is somebody here, when you look at it from an Arsenal point of view, they are leading this race. A great backup player to Saka, a great backup player to Martinelli. We know they have Trossard as well. We know they have Gabriel Jesus that can play in these positions. And I know that there's a lot of fans of Arsenal that would love to see Pedro Neto purchased. However, there is something to be said about the talent of this young 19-year-old. What could he go on to be? How cheaply, he's only just signed a new deal, by the way, like very, very recently in the last month. Come this summer, he could be, he could be expensive. But in two to three years' time, if he continues to impress, 
that money could skyrocket exponentially. So it becomes one of those deals where it could be expensive now. He may not be as ready as, say, a Pedro Neto, but the upside and the ceiling could be much, much higher indeed. And what's really intriguing about this deal, it coincides with the story that Newcastle United have earmarked Arsenal midfielder Emil Smith-Rowe as a potential summer signing. Now, I know you'll say, well, smith is not a winger, Terry. Recently, he's not been anything good, Arsenal, with all due respect. He's been playing on the bench. And I do believe that with the links to the likes of Bino Gittins, the links to the likes of Pedro Neto, with Fabio Vieira stepping up, with Kai Havertz landed at the club, I just don't see there being a long-term future for Emil Smith-Rowe for one reason or another, whether it's his injuries, the manager don't quite fancy him. I believe he will be phased out. Newcastle United would be a great place for him to go. I think Newcastle still need to improve on the overall quality in their squad. And there is definitely talent within Emil Smith-Rowe. So don't be surprised to see the idea that maybe, you know, Gittins, maybe Neto, maybe Tony could all come in with a number of exits still to come from Arsenal. Because if you were to get rid of Emil Smith-Rowe and Reese Nelson, I know they're academy players. I know they're loved by, the, by a lot of the Arsenal fan base. But are, there any of the, are either of them in your genuine opinions? And I want to hear this from you now. Are they genuinely good enough, in your opinion, to move the needle enough for Arsenal? Or would you rather sell and invest that money in new up-and-coming talent, fresh blood, to push you on to that next stage? which is essentially even more consistency at the level that Arsenal are now. Let me know in the comment section below. Coupling with the, the stories surrounding the 19-year-old uh, winger, Jamie Vino Giddens, there's also continual talk about the England striker, Ivan Tony. It won't go away. It says here that Arsenal have been working on a deal to sign the England striker, Tony, from Brentford. And conversations have taken place between the two clubs. So talks are starting to advance. Talks are starting to become deeper. What's very interesting still, though, is Chelsea are not taking their, 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 their iron out of this fire. They believe they have a chance. And the reason that Chelsea believe they have a chance is the one thing I would say to Arsenal fans is, and David Ornstein has spoken about this and a number of Arsenal journalists have, that there is a fervent belief there may not be the money available in January to do any business. And depending on where Arsenal are in the league, in the Champions League, how they're currently doing at that stage in the domestic trophies, look, they've invested loads, Arsenal. And I don't think that the fans can look at £750 million over four years and not be satisfied. But there has to be a way of raising money. So I mentioned a moment ago, Reese Nelson, I mentioned Smith Rowe, and there may be a, another player or two within the Arsenal squad, Cedric, where Arsenal fans may look at it and go, do you know what? Maybe we can be quite clever with this business. Maybe we don't buy these players in, some of these players in January. Maybe it's a loan with an obligation to buy. That way you can sort things out on FFP. But also selling players is going to be key. Genuinely will be key if Arsenal want to land some of these individuals. But Ivan Tony. Jamie, Bino Gittins, Pedro Neto, these players linked to Arsenal are massive. But listen, Chelsea, don't write Chelsea off. I know a lot of Arsenal. Listen, everyone knows I back Arsenal when it comes to the, the nonsense media against you. Everyone knows when it comes to Arsenal, I've praised you heavily. Even as a United fan, it pains me to do it, but I've done it. I can't write Chelsea off, though. I can't sit here and go, yeah, 100%. I would pick Arsenal if I was Tony between the two. But that doesn't mean Chelsea can't land him. And this is why Arsenal fans have to push. Because if you say, well, we'll leave it until the summer, who knows what happens between January and the summer? What if Chelsea swoop in in January and take him? That means the summer moves off. You, I think you have to demand your club goes and gets these players in January. That's my take. Chelsea fans, do you think with these financial issues that Arsenal may be faced, could you get it done? Let me know. Now, moving up to Manchester, or back to Manchester, looking at City, it says here that Calvin Phillips could be offered a shocked esca shock escape route from Man City to Bayern Munich. We know they want more midfielders. They looked at McTominay. They nearly got um, Paulinho, who's now signed a new bloody deal at Fulham. It seems to happen so much. They nearly leave, and then they get a new deal. But I suppose it's the money. And there's no harm in people wanting to make sure they're up in their earnings. 
getting their peas, you know, getting their bees and honey and, 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 and essentially run into the mountains and they're allowed to do that. They, you know, they've got to take care of their family and their extended family and, and change their lives. Absolutely. Calvin Phillips, he keeps being linked with the move away. We know Pep don't fancy him. He didn't feature enough in the three games that Rodri was missing for any of us to believe that the manager fancies him as a player. I think, yes, he can do something. He can turn it around and become a star at this club. I don't think, I don't think we said Pep second season, watch a Pep player. I don't think Pep wants him. I think Pep looks at him as lazy. I think Pep looks at him as slightly unprofessional. And he sees an opportunity to cash in on him. From a Bayern Munich point of view, listen, I think Phillips will do well. I don't know why Phillips has had such a regression at City. Maybe it was the standards were too high and he wasn't used to it. Maybe, just, just maybe it was a bad fit. But I do think a, a second opportunity is, 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 is worth a punt from a club on Calvin Phillips because I do believe there's a lot of talent in there. How much City get from that? I bet City get a lot of money as well. I guarantee you City end up with a ridiculous amount of money for this guy. I really do. But we'll see. I do think he's on his way out. It could be as early as January because he's barely going to play games. They've signed other midfielders over him. Remember, they, they put in £100 million pound odd bid for Declan Rice. You wouldn't do that if you backed Calvin Phillips, as far as I'm concerned. But City fans, let me know. Listen, people, hit like and share buttons. As I always say, please follow our TikTok as well. Scan the QR code or make sure you click on our link in the description. Until next time, take care. Goodbye. God bless. And I'll see you all again.